Hi there, and welcome to our latest video, this time on the triangles of the neck. So these triangles were defined long ago when surgical dissection was the only way to investigate anatomy. So these days, they're less clinically relevant, but they're still useful in discussing discrete anatomy and for, for simplifying the communication of pathology in some domains. The trick is to know thoroughly the origin, path, and insertion of a select handful of muscles. And once you have them in your mind, picturing the triangles becomes a breeze. So we'll start off with the anterior triangle. Its medial border is the midline of the neck. Its superior border is the mandible, all the way back, and the lateral border is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Super simple, as you can see. Think jawline, midline, and then sternocleidomastoid. I'm going to highlight now the digastric muscle, Latin for two bellies, which is very important for the next two internal triangles of the anterior triangle, which we'll discuss. Let's talk about the submandibular triangle first, superior border of which is the mandible. The medial border is the anterior belly of the digastric. And the lateral border is the posterior belly of the digastric. Inside the submandibular triangle is the submandibular gland. So we've now defined the anterior triangle borders, and within that, the submandibular triangle. We'll use the digastric again to mark a border of our next triangle, the submental. Again, mandible, anterior belly of the digastric, and then the hyoid bone. And I'm drawing in the midline of the neck as the medial border, but this is actually considered one triangle across to the other anterior belly of the left digastric. Inside the submental triangle is the submental lymph nodes. Okay, moving laterally now, let's talk about the carotid triangle which again utilizes the posterior belly of the digastric, the sternocleidomastoid, and then another muscle that we'll be hearing about a bit in this video, the omohyoid. Inside the carotid triangle is the carotid sheath, which contains the common carotid artery, among other things, cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal, and the ansa cervicalis, which is a bunch of nerves that supply muscles in this area. Okay, we've almost completed the components of the anterior triangle now. We've got this one patch inferiorly that is yet to be filled. And that's known as the muscular triangle. The borders of that being the hyoid bone, the omohyoid again, the sternocleidomastoid, and then the midline of the neck. And in here we have the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. So that's the muscular triangle, the last of the internal triangles within the anterior triangle of the neck. Okay, now let's move posteriorly. And I'm going to highlight here that muscle we've mentioned a few times, the omohyoid. Let's define the borders of the posterior triangle. Trapezius, posteriorly. The sternocleidomastoid anteriorly, and then a bit of the clavicle as well. The posterior triangle is divided into two discrete triangles separated by the omohyoid muscle. The inferior portion of the posterior triangle is called the supraclavicular triangle, the borders of which are the omohyoid, the sternocleidomastoid, and the clavicle. And within there, we find the supraclavicular lymph nodes. Last but not least, we have the occipital triangle, bordered by the omohyoid, trapezius, and sternocleidomastoid. And within there, we'll find cranial nerve 11, the accessory nerve, subclavian artery, external jugular vein, and the chunks of the brachial plexus. That's the occipital triangle. And that's it for the triangles of the neck. I hope you found that useful. Make sure to hit subscribe and we'll see you next time.